and we we, we already have uh, our second speaker dr subir singh we have joined our meeting and uh, uh, now we are going to listen to his talk his talk will be focused on nutritional diseases in poultry uh, talking about uh, dr singh dr subir is renowned poultry vet uh, consultant dwelling with tremendous uh, growth of nepalese uh, poultry industry since uh, uh, since uh, more than 20 years he is working as associate professor at uh, of vet medicine at department of veterinary medicine and public health at agriculture and forestry university and also chair as vice uh, uh, chairman of nepal veterinary council dr singh's work has been with disease control poultry husbandry management biosecurity and advanced technological adaptation for modernization modernization of poultry industry in nepal which is meticulous spotlight on avinas group of poultry industries he has also experience of tackling husbandry and health interconnected issues at farm farmers field level uh, during the upcoming training he will be highlighting on nutritional diseases in poultry so now dr singh the floor is yours please proceed with your presentation uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Bandhu, Dr. Bandhu. So, uh, it is my pleasure to be here and share my experience to all of you. Uh, I think uh, uh, most of you are Nepalese or uh, uh, what language can I use? Uh, English is fine or we can go with the mix English, English and Nepal. English only would be fine. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, today my topic is nutritional disease in poultry. And uh, uh, as explained by you, uh, I'm working at uh, as an associate professor in Department of Veterinary Medicine and Public Health. And today I am not going to bore you with a lot of uh, traditional diseases like uh, uh, saying a star grazing posture, rickets, uh, um, osteomalacia. But uh, what I like to share you that uh, uh, in my experience, what we have learned from our uh, uh, during graduation uh, and uh, during universities, those are uh, very traditional and conventional diseases. And now we are shifting from uh, those diseases to the um, uh, modern common diseases, such as uh, uh, you can say sudden death syndrome. Uh, similarly, there is a disease uh, like uh, uh, case fatigue, and there are a lot of diseases coming up due to close house and uh, intensive farming system. So here I like to uh, highlight and share my experience with these new diseases so that when you are going, uh, when you are working in the field, you can acquainted with it and you can uh, resolve it with your uh, uh, similar type of knowledge. So I think uh, I will, uh, I will not go to highlight what is nutrition, what is uh, type of nutrition, these all are covered, already covered during this training uh, period. So um, my main point is here that uh, nutrition uh, start from, in, in case of poultry, nutrition start from por procurement of raw materials, ingestion, digestion, and absorption. Uh, technically, we start from ingestion, digestion, and absorption, but here there are some of the reasons why I have also incorporated procurement because uh, the quality of raw material is main, main uh, determine, uh, determining factor for good quality of feed. So if there is a failure in any of these steps will result in nutritional diseases. Uh, you, you all know that uh, um, we have to have a, not only the balanced feed, but we have to have a, a feed which is uh, free from toxins and uh, anti-nutrition factors. So uh, nutrients should be in the diet in a proper concentration and it should be balanced one. Uh, as you already know, uh, we have uh, micronutrients and micronutrients. So here I have incorporated uh, water, uh, which is also a major macronutrient, whereas carbohydrate, fiber, fat, and proteins, uh, whereas micronutrients are mineral, vitamins, and others. Uh, why I have classified and try to remember these points to you, because uh, these macro and micronutrients are uh, sometimes we say this is a, in a very minor, uh, this is required in a very minor concentration, but it has a very significant role in biochemical um, uh, activities of the birds. So, so uh, normally 38 type of dietary nutrients is uh, required 
to prepare a concentrate and balanced diet. The nutritional def uh, deficiency can be formed, can be uh, acquainted due to uh, omitment or negligence of some of or many or even single of these dietary nutrients, adverse interaction between nutrients in other uh, in otherwise apparently well fortified diets or the overriding effect of a specific anti nutrition factor. So uh, we have already, I think you have already gone through what are the anti nutrition factors. So sometime uh, in the feed uh, there are uh, cross matching and well fortified, even the diet is well good, but there might be the synergistic effect of uh, anti nutritional factor or uh, uh, the toxins which might uh, causes nutritional deficiency. To prevent nutritional deficiency, diet must be supplemented with normally sodium chloride, methionine, calcium, phosphorus, zinc, iron, selenium, and most the all of the essential vitamins. So in case of poultry, uh, except vitamin C, all of the vitamins are essential for poultry, chicken. And uh, nutritional deficiency or toxicity most often occur due to improper ration formulation or milling or improper intake or bioavailability. So if we have a good uh, formulation, then the other factor is milling. And uh, if we have a good free, uh, feed for the chicken, the main important is the feed intake or bioavailability. If the bird is not taking uh, the food or uh, it has a not good, uh, do not have a good absorption, then also we have a lot of nutrient deficiencies. So uh, if we can take an uh, example, like uh, uh, there are severe um, uh, deficiencies, marginal amino acid deficiency of 10, amino acid result in increased feed intake with concomitant reduction in body weight and ultimately the, there will be lean tissue growth resulting in increased body fat. So sometimes we find a boiler with a very lean body weight, with a very uh, like a bony car carcasses, but there is a uh, increased fat production. So there might be some of the deficiency due to amino acids. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, for example, we can take a very uh, uh, common example of linoleic acid which is, uh, which is uh, I think, uh, not so important, but uh, in the layers farming, if we reduce it, there will be a lower egg production. And the most important factor is it decreases the egg size and as well as hatchability. So with this example, I just like to um, uh, highlight you all that nutrition play a fundamental role in determining the health and performance of poultry and a correctly balanced diet is essential to avoid disease associated with deficiency or toxicity of a particular nutrient. So thus, we have a very important role of nutrition to minimize the, this type of nutrients. Uh, with these two slides, I like to highlight why, what is the role of these micro and macronutrients. Uh, like the protein is a very important factor, which is mostly important for making the structural part, hemostasis, protein mechanism, transportation of oxygen, vitamins, mechanism, ETC. Similarly, we have a carbohydrate, which is a primary source of metabolizable energy, and uh, uh, chicken lack lactase enzyme. That's why uh, we have, uh, if we are going to feed more lactose things, then it will not be utilized, or we have to add this enzyme. Similarly, fat is the source of energy, and most of the fat are uh, utilized for uh, constituting of cell organelles, membrane, adipose tissues. Similarly, we have a vitamins, which, which are most, most of them all are important and uh, uh, essentials, except vitamin C. And then the very important thing is that we have uh, essential inorganic element like calcium, phosphorus, uh, sodium chloride, magnesium, water, and oxygen. So, uh, in this slide, I just like to highlight what are the essential in, inorganic element and what is the important part of it. For example, let's take an example with the calcium. So calcium is essential for bone and egg cell formation for clotting and cellular metabolic process. Uh, if we talk about the importance of potassium, potassium is a major cation necessary for membrane potential, cellular fluid balance and biochemical reaction and heart activity. So 
by looking to the function we can see if there is a sign or abnormality due to deficit or similar type of sign then we can predict that oh maybe the feed is deficit with this type of mineral so that's why i just try to uh, remember uh, what is the importance of this similarly uh, the very important uh, factor is water which is the medium upon which the body chemistry function and oxygen which is the energy for uh, releases energy for food stuffs so to conclude disease and nutrition are closely interlinked nutrition management of poultry involves assessment of nutritional requirement of various ages and uh, the very important thing is that uh, poor management condition with respect to supply of nutrient may lead to starvation and infectious disease in the poultry different nutrition strategies should be followed to minimize or eliminate all avoidable forms of stressor so major thing is uh, uh, with the nutrition we also have to think about stresses similarly metabolic problems has been a fact of life in a poultry production for last few decades and uh, due to intensified farming system as well as improvement in the genetic potential for growth and production metabolic diseases are more common in boiler than uh, breeder and layers leg problem is the absence of infectious agent if there is no infectious agent but there is a leg problem then we can suspect that it may be related with the cardiovascular system or metabolic disorder of the bird so uh, poultry metabolic diseases are mostly concerned with the two functions or the disorder of the two systems the first one is cardiovascular disorder which is the boiler chickens are responsible for the major portion of flock mortality and another is the musculoskeletal disorder which account for the less mortality but slow down growth and causes lameness which remain a major welfare concern uh, here uh, i just want a query and question from your side that uh, if we look to this slide uh, what type of thing do you, do you do you understand or do you remember so if you are a clinic clinician and working for a field as a field veterinarian poultry field veterinarian then you should always consider what and where, when chicken needs that means with the nutritional perspective you must have to remember okay this is the baby chicken so what they need what is the essential things they are mostly required uh, why i like to highlight this point because i have seen the veterinarian prescribing a day old chicks with very high amount of high concentration of calcium some also supplement high amount of vitamin e but i think it is there it is of no use for them because in the first week or in the day old it is not go, it, it it is not going to give a more contribution to that point but if we are adding like a more protein like a more vitamin a uh, which is the regenerative vitamins so such type of vitamin can be contributing for that so always think that what bird needs in which stages or in which ages so a clinician or veterinarian must think on a board stage and their requirement this is very important because if we think on that perspective we will minimize the nutritional disorders uh, for the remembrance uh, you most of you have already seen this slide so you can see in the first seven days of life the digestive system is growing up and most of the visceral part visceral organs develop so in this stage maybe liver tonic maybe some type of absorb uh, enzymes can be given because at that time the digestive system is not full functional so this can enhance the absorbability of nutrients similarly if the bird is going to the pre lay pre lay stage then we can improve we can give uh, start enhancing with the calcium phosphorus and vitamin d because the bird uh, requirement is going to change in that part so always keep in mind that when uh, what is the age of stage of the birds and what does it mainly requires so uh, 
here uh, in this example, I just like to mention that uh, when the bird is going to be a, at a pre lay stage, then only they need uh, here we can increase the calcium. There is no need of giving calcium here or in other stages because we our feed is normally already balanced with beta, uh, one percent of calcium, and one percent calcium can be obtained from very simple sources. It doesn't need a very uh, complex feed formulation. Now, I'm just going to enter with the abnormality of Excel because in the field condition, you might have uh, faced with these type of similar conditions. And sometimes you might be worried uh, that what is the cause behind it? Uh, most of the time in uh, uh, like a veterinarian's mind, it always comes that it may be due to infectious causes, but we have to differentiate that it is not only due to the nutritional causes, but it might be due to the uh, like uh, causes of nutritional aspect also. For example, here, uh, if uh, you, you will find the dirty eggs, then it means there is a weight dropping and which might be due to poor gut health or might be the feed ingredients, which is causing loose dropping. So here, uh, I just like to uh, brainstorm with you all that what are the causes when there is a um, uh, what we mix in the feed due to which there is a loo loose dropping. So if we are going to replace maize with uh, wheat or we are we are going to add more broken rice, then there is a possibility of loose droppings. So this this can be correlated and minimized. You can see a very good example of cell-less egg. So if the egg is showing cell-less, then what may be the cause? The major causes can be inadequate nutrition such as calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and vitamin D. So with this slide, with this example, I like to just highlight that there is not only the infectious causes, but there is merely a lot of nutritional causes which causes abnormality in egg production. Now, uh, as the topic reveals, I like to highlight with the nutritional related diseases. Uh, so, uh, it is, um, uh, I, in my mind, I always have a, um, a lost, lot of list of diseases and the most important uh, farmer complaint or disease is that they say, my hen is not laying uh, good, so we have a poor egg production. I think you all might be facing the same problem. And uh, before going to the micro level, there is a gross complaint of, from the farmer that they need to enhance their egg production. So this is also a type of disease or problem or disorder. And here, I have just uh, listed the causes. What may be the causes of poor egg production? So I have listed one causes like a non-infectious and another as a infectious causes. So with my topic, I just like to highlight only two non-infectious causes, which is nutrition and another is water. So I'm just going to show you the example, how to correlate the effect of nutrition or effect of water on egg production. So in this slide, you can see the poor egg production is mostly due to, uh, so before going to the, I think uh, the causes or uh, the effect, may I ask any of you, uh, what you do when you have a complaint with the poor egg production, if it is non-infectious cause? what you do, what you supplement or what is your, uh, uh, I think, uh, advice to the uh, farmer. Can any of you say on this? Dr. Sab, I am a broiler farmer. So I'm from India. I'm a broiler farmer. So regarding layers, I, I, I just do not have like, you know, I've been doing farming for more than 25, 27 years. But in layer farming, nothing. If anything about broiler, I can tell you. 
Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. We have uh, some example with the bullet disease also. I am just coming on there. Okay, and okay, we will okay. discuss with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, any other any other one like Bisal or uh, Pandu or anyone? We tend to give uh, calcium in okay. case of layers. Calcium, okay. vitamin D, phosphorus combination. Nice, and, nice. Uh, uh, or uh, amino acids. Mm -hmm. Liquid supplementation of amino acids. Okay. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, so, if I prioritize, what should I give? The first thing in my mind comes that I need to increase the energy. So, just remember two things. If you need to increase more production, the first factor is energy. Second factor is protein. And third factor is what you said like vitamin, calcium, other things. But Initial in initial days when I start my practicing, I also give try to give more vitamins if there is less production, more protein like amino acid compounds, uh, like uh, some brand names uh, coming with the uh, amino acids, and uh, I never uh, thought to give uh, any energy sources. So now I think sugar will help. I think sugar will help. Exactly. Sugar or jaggery. Exactly, uh, on Kar Singh Ji. Yeah, we give uh, uh, molasses, jaggery, as well as probiotic in the feeder for in the drinking water directly for three, four days. And we get a very good result, very excellent result. That's why here I like to just remember and revise you all that if you have a problem with a poor egg production, if the cause is non infectious, I am repeating it, if the cause is non infectious, then just try and give with the First, energy, increase your energy level uh, because you cannot increase, go and increase in your feed level. That's why you have to give something which is very significant with your drinking water. That's why jaggery or molasses can be the good choice along with the probiotics. You can supplement it. That's why in this slide, I have just highlighted that the first factor is energy, second is protein, third is calcium, and next one can be vitamin D as well as there are other lot of vitamins and other elements which which is responsible to increase or improve egg production so the the, the last point says that according to each stage of production like uh, initiation growth development pre laying and laying the nutrient requirement of the birds varies that's why we have to keep in mind that in which stage that need what things what nutrients the next in the next slide i have highlighted about water so most of us we never remember the water but you can see the point which i have highlighted here this is egg production depend on a large extent on the hydration status of the hen so as my experience i am working with the farm having 200000 uh, layers and if there is a chalking of maple line then uh, uh, if there is a in one row if the bird if if it is carrying 20,000 birds and having a production of like a uh, 90% then if there is a nipple chalking or water depletion for two hours then I find like a seven to five to seven percent decrease in egg production, which is very severe, very, which is very huge losses for uh, this context. That's why I always emphasize and I always try to check water consumption if the, there is a complaint of the farmer that it has a, a poor egg production. So I also like to remember all of you that water plays a very important role to improve egg production or to maintain the vitality of boiler as well as layer chicken. Dr. Sab, in India, we have a we have a water meter. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, uh, what you call that? Uh, even in broiler farm, which is having four thousand birds, also we have a broiler. We have a water meter installed, and uh, that man has to check that water water that water meter every eight hours. Yes, yes, yes. With that water Correct. meter, you come to know, like you know, whether the water consumption is less. Or water consumption is more or there is a leakage or some other issue because i think 
the water consumption i mean before any disease strikes the water consumption goes down yeah 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 so we yeah. have uh, what we have a what you call that a plastic make water con uh, water meter in yeah. most of the farms most of the farms yes you are true, that you is are a true. very that is a there is a very good tool i mean i mean uh, tool to record and tool to understand yes yes thank you thank you for you, your input yeah you are quite true uh, in all of our farm in uh, most of the close house and intensive farming system we adopt uh, meter water meter we we have a online connection with it and we we can see uh, the consumption water consumption and feed consumption as well as egg production uh, even uh, from farm online uh, softwares and uh, we also have another tool that uh, when we visit the farm we always try to see the level of water uh, in the pipeline which is in between which is at the start and which is at the end which reflect that if the water level is good that means the water consumption is also the bird is having a good water consumption in a line so always try to uh, have a, some uh, parametric information on this part which can be minimized so uh, what are, what can be the uh, causes of poor water consumption low water consumption the first factor is water temperature if the water temperature is high then water consumption decreases water temperature drops excessively and freezes in the supply system sometime excess salt in the water also uh, causes uh, water uh, uh, poor uh, water consumption water trough in poor condition or, or insufficient if the bird density is high and the, the nipple line or the drinker is low then also water consumption is less and presence of medication or substances that sour the taste of water also differs the water consumption here i like to highlight one of my uh, point what I practice, I never give a lot of medicines in a day world six. I would just give one or two things like electrolytes and vitamin C for the first drinking water. But I see in the practice, I also even my in a earlier uh, practice, I used to give five or six like vitamin, amino acids, liver tonic, calcium, uh, milk powder, skim milk powder, electrolyte, vitamin D, skim milk powder, lot of things. So if you are thirsty uh, and if I give you uh, uh, juice to drink, then it will be very difficult for you to drink it. But if you are thirsty and I give a simple, uh, a good uh, temperature water, then you will drink a lot. So what I like to highlight you that for the boiler chicks or the layer chicks in a day old, just try to give a simple, good hygienic water, good feed with some of the electrolytes and probiotic. Don't, don't make a uh, more uh, medication in the day old chicks so that they will get disappointed to drink the uh, water. This is a very important for uh, field practices. Now, uh, you can see the another factor what the nutrients are um, uh, doing with the type of egg cell quality. So due to nutritional deficiency, you can see soft egg cells, then fairy eggs, small size and big size, double yolk eggs. These all are the um, uh, nutritional effect, uh, not only nutritional but infectious. But here, here infectious also. But here I am just trying to highlight only the nutritional aspects so here can anybody say what is the reason behind a double yolk egg what can be the reason nutritional reason to get a double yolk anyone just refresh your uh, concept anyone Is it because uh, over supplementation of uh, amino acid? Yeah. Uh, Particularly if, methanin? Exactly. Uh, if we talk about uh, the feed, uh, uh, feed for uh, nutrients density in the feed, the major reason behind it is high protein diet in the early stage and giving a very high feed 
like um, you can remember the problem in case of boiler weeder. So if you drastically increase the feed in the early pre stage, then you will find more double EAP eggs. That's why I always recommend to increase your feed with a constant, with a just looking into the production, not only according to the age or according to the weight, but also match with the production so that it will not get a high amount of protein, but that protein can match with the productivity, production. And if we are going to see the soft cell egg, that means there is a uh, poor uh, absorption of calcium and vitamin D in the diet. So with this, you can just control and look into uh, the causes uh, behind it. So most of the common causes due to uh, nutritional defect are misshaped eggs, coated cells. Coated cells means during a start of lay, you will find a very small size eggs with a this type of texture, like a whitish patches, calcium patches. So you can say this is a coated cell eggs, rough cell eggs, soft and weak, thin cell egg, and dirty and glazed cells. And these are the major causes behind it is low energy diet, uh, protein, calcium, and vitamin D in the diet. So if you manage this, you can check or improve this. Similarly, abnormal egg size. If you will find a egg with a very large size as well as egg with a very small size, the main thing here you need to balance is the protein. So higher intake of balanced protein produces larger egg and underfeeding of protein produces a smaller egg. Protein is directly related with the Protein and linoleic acid is directly related with the size of eggs. Okay, so 1% linoleic acid in the diet uh, have a good effect to maximize the egg size. Similarly, now I am going with the fourth problem, which is cannibalism and feather picking. Uh, most of us know that uh, if the birds suffer from mineral deficiency, then uh, particularly uh, with the amino acids like methionine with the uh, deficiency of zinc, or if the bird is suffer uh, suffering from dermatitis, then there is a problem of cannibalism and feather picking. So, as well as if we are practicing with a pallet diet, where fiber is very less, or if the diet is calculated with a very fiber-free diet, then the bird have a this type of behavior of cannibalism and feather picking. Most of the time, we try to balance our feed with 3 to 4 percent to 6 percent fiber. So, because if we increase from 6 to more than that, then the there is a problem with the digestibility. That's why we try to maintain 3 to 4 or sometimes 4 to 6, up to 6 maximum limit. And due to this, uh, the board um, have uh, this type of problem can be checked. So, uh, as well as also we can, the, the particle size of the feed and uh, the diet, uh, like uh, calcium grits is very important to check this problem. And a methionine deficiency may lead to feather picking apart from limiting weight gain. Normally, if you uh, forget to keep methionine, or if you forget to keep salt in the diet, then there is a major problem of cannibalism and feather picking. So there are a lot of this chart in this slide. You can see uh, the lot of reason behind which uh, there is a uh, problem of nutritional problem of feather picking, like low protein amino acid imbalance, low mineral levels such as calcium and sodium, and uh, there is a sudden changes in diet. If the diet is a very lo low particle size then uh, there might be a problem of uh, uh, this cannabis and feather picking. Here, I like to again remember you all that I am just linking and highlighting with the nutritional aspect, but there are other causes also behind it. Now, how you can prevent it? So, the main uh, solution for prevention of this problem is to, uh, to check your energy, protein, and sulfur-containing amino acids, salt, and calcium. So methionine is sulfur-containing amino acids, uh, salt, and 
calcium. Sometimes in, a, in a, the farming system, we give them some type of grasses like lucerne, alfalfa, or barsim, or something uh, forages. We just hang from the rope to the bird's level, and those birds, uh, they concentrate to just picking those type of fibers, and they forget to uh, show their behavior like cannibalism and feather picking. So you can keep those type of things so that their mind can be diverted. Similarly, uh, uh, you can give a ensure coarse feed, not powdery feed, coarse feed you have to give, as well as you have to give a 2 to 3 mm of calcium particle size. And similarly, uh, if you have a bale drinker and nipple drinker, you will find the nipple drinker more easier to reduce the problem of cannibalism and feather picking because they just pick the uh, nipple and uh, they satisfy their behavior. Now, another problem is fatty liver and kidney syndrome. So from a very simpler one, like a problem with low egg, egg production, I am uh, getting towards the com complex disease type like a fatty liver and kin kidney syndrome. So this is a very common new type of problem which has arrived with the birds, boiler breeders, heavy, heavier breeders, and also as well as which is genetically you, you can use you to say like a fast feeder and slow feeder. So in case of fast feeder, and high producing, high yielding, genetically modified, you can say like a heavier breeds, like, like what breeds we are using nowadays, these shows fatty liver and kidney syndromes. So fatty liver and kidney syndrome is also known as fat nephrosis or pink disease. It was firstly recognized in Denmark and it is mainly due to biotin deficiency related metabolic activities in boiler or layers. And the most common age is two to three weeks of age. So here, if you see the lesions, what I have shown in the slides, uh, if there is a uh, fat deposited in the liver or in the kidney, you can suspect one of the causes behind it might be biotin deficiency, and you can supplement your feed as well as you can supplement the bird with a biotin uh, supplement uh, in the drinking water and you can reduce the, this problem. So uh, the main, uh, uh, the, the main uh, you can say solution or control measure or preventive, preventive program can be, you can, you need to increase biotin in your diet and always try to remember is it as a very important component. The next disease is fatty liver hemorrhagic syndrome. So sometimes we confuse between this fatty liver kidney syndrome and sometimes uh, and this fatty liver hemorrhagic syndrome. Both are very similar with the names, but the one which we can differentiate with the hemorrhagic. So if you see hemorrhage from the liver, and there is a sign of fatty liver, then you can say it as a fatty liver hemorrhagic syndrome. It occurs due to increased accumulation of fat in the liver and due to mis imbalance, or you can say due to high fat in the diet. Uh, uh, it is commonly seen in the laying hens and breeders, boiler breeders. Pullet carrying and excess of body fat are more prone for this condition. So, in the growing stage, in the boiler as well as in the layers, you need to check whether there is there should be first priority with the growth, not with the fattening. So after grow after growth, then only you highlight with the fattening. If you highlight more fattening in the earlier stage, this type of problem comes up. So in case of fatty liver hemorrhagic syndrome, major cause is low protein, high energy uh, ration. Ration with amino acid imbalance or deficiency. Diet low in lipotrophic factors such as choline, chloride, methionine, and vitamin B12. Certain mold or mold toxin, mycotoxin can be the causes. 
liver hemorrhage occur in the laying hens such as if we feed with rape seed meal that contains high level of glucosinate so these are the factor why there is a cause what is the cause of fatty liver hemorrhagic syndrome and how you can control it by checking all these parameters and by controlling this so if you control like a if you check energy protein lipolytic acid uh, amino acid methionine vitamin b12 you can easily prevent this disease so the level of dietary protein should be increased by 1 to 2% and supplementation of 40 g of 50 g of copper sulfate or 500 g of choline 3 mg of vitamin b12 or 5000 iu of vitamin e or methionine uh, 500 g of methionine per ton of feed should be done to improve this condition if you have a problem like this this type of addition or supplementation can reduce the problem now we have a very common problem called ascites so here i like to share uh, firstly i like to get your experience about ascites i think uh, our friend from india must have the problem with ascites do you have sir sorry uh, actually ascites are the i mean you i mean you are talking about mostly layers right no 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 now this problem i i am just i have a common package with all the layers as well as the problem with the boilers so now this is a actually specifically... in, in broiler in, if you ask about in broiler we have found very good results of ascites by switching off the light uh, by not switching on the lights mm -hmm. means in means broilers put, in broilers put, means putting uh, by, into the dark, by dark not place. switching on the lights Mm -hmm. i mean jaise jaise what we call that uh, the uh, i mean the sun sets mm -hmm. and uh, he will not switch on especially after 700 g or 800 g of body weight he will not switch on the light till the morning uh, what you call that natural light comes mm -hmm. with this with this we have reduced the problem of ascites by 90% that is free of cost another thing uh, we used to get the problem of what we call that uh, Uh, excess body weight, like excess body weight means uh, the body weight, the bird of a body weight which is more than uh, the standard, and there we used to get lot of mortality, which we call excess weight mortality. That also have reduced ninety percent. This is yes. our. We have been practicing this this year only. Right? I mean, probably in last in two thousand twenty two. This is the what you call that Ram Ban Ilaj. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. thank you uh, for your sharing your experiences uh, you are right uh, with, with uh, several causes light is a very important factor for ascites and uh, uh, what you name the disease called uh, overweight disease we call it uh, technically as a sudden death syndrome so we also yes, yes, we can is. also i mean you call sdc right yes yes sds yeah. sds sds yeah yes. yeah, yeah. so we can control that problem also thank you very much and so, and and also the hcr also is very good mm -hmm. immunity Certainly. the birds immunity also increases like hamari bhasha mein ek teer se matlab ek teer se kai nishane lag jati yes thank you thank you sir so now uh, just uh, we uh, now we are going to refresh with the disease called ascites so it ascites is caused by a increased production or decreased removal of peritoneal lymph which result in accumulation of serous fluid in the body cavity leading to carcass contamination or death so this means this is a interference with the lymphatic system which power most of the lymph fluids in the cavity and we uh, we see the due to that there is a cause of death or the carcass quality meat quality also decreases so the causes behind ascites is mostly like due to obstruction of lymph drainage decrease plasma onto oncotic pressure increase vascular permeability increase hydrostatic pressure in the vascular system so these are the major cause behind ascites the most frequent causes of ascites in poultry is increased portal pressure secondary to right ventricular failure or liver damage so if 
there are other causes which is causing damage to the liver or heart failure or ventricular failure then there is also the problem with the ascites so what we need to do we need to grow our bird according to their age according to their standard but we should not jump with that parameter so if we, if you are rushing if you are in a very high speed then this disease can follow you so i think the uh, symptoms are also sometimes like ivh yes yes ivh but i think uh, uh, um, the field veterinarian easily can uh, differentiate between uh, ivh and ascites i will come to yeah, yeah 100% point. but lot of similarity between these two yes yes lot of similarity certainly you are right so you, here you can see uh, there is a fluid field and uh, you can also find the thrilling thrilling movement of uh, birds uh, abdomen palpation uh, so with the, with that you can differentiate uh, and uh, the another clinical sign for the bird is most of the time the bird die on the abdominal side so the recumbency of dead bird is on the abdominal part so they you can see in this figure they lie down and this is the common clinical sign in the in these cases so what should we do we do now before going to uh, before going or before highlighting the nutritional aspect we should always remember selection of boiler with low or medium or uh, slow body uh, growing birds or we can manage our birds with good management practices like we should not have a very if you are going giving more light what will happen it will it will eat more and if they are, they are eating more with a high nutrient density then the growth will be faster and here you must remember that the genetician has been successfully improving the carcass quality body weight bone frame but they are still far behind to increase the uh, visceral organs like the, uh, according to their size they are unable to increase the lungs heart kidney most of the visceral organs that's why those organ are still insufficient to carry the burden of that much carcass sizes due to this this abnormality arises so the another nutritional factor now i'm going to come uh, talk about the nutritional factor so here the oxygen demand is very important so if we are having if we are rearing slow growing strain slow slow growing boilers because a fast growth rate increases the demand for oxygen and hence the workload on the heart predisposed boiler for the development of pulmonary hypertension so chicken embryo grows rapidly over the last 7 days of incubation resulting in 60% increase in oxygen consumption during the interval between the start of pulmonary breath and hatching so just after hatching the oxygen demand is increase so we have to give more ventilation and the problem is also correlated with the brooding so if we are brooding our chicks with the poor ventilation then there might be the problem of ascites but feeding a low protein low energy diet during the first 14 days after hatching is recommended to manage to is recommended to manage uh the ascites in birds uh so at least uh, in the first 7 to 14 days you can correlate the growth of the bird with the standards and try to not exceed that with this you can control and this can be managed by your manipulation in the feed manipulation in the lighting schedule you can control that similarly presence of major antioxidant compounds such as vitamin e selenium vitamin a vitamin c and glucothionate in the circulation or at the level of respective membrane plays vital role in protecting damage to the cellular level thus these compounds these things can we add uh, to the diet of or we can add as a supplement now the very important disease for the boiler is a uh, sudden death syndrome sds so as we have talked earlier 
this is also known as acute death syndrome or flip over disease and normally occur in healthy fast growing commercial boiler these point are very important you just see this occur in healthy fast growing commercial boiler so what happen if you are giving very high density diet feeding the birds more than that is requires giving more light then the bird try to grow more but their visceral organs or their uh, vessel metabolic rate cannot maintain that due to that the ready birds who are ready to be sold that die with a very mild type of stress or without stress and this at uh, this this disease causes more economic loss because in in this point the bird are ready to sell but they certainly there is a mortality of 2 to 3 percent every day daily mortality due to this so here what can be the sign what can be the clinical sign so we find in the in if there is a sudden death syndrome you can see in the mid mid of the day like when there is a stress when there is a sun sign the bird will uh, get excited and uh, uh, jump for two to three times and then have a sudden death and the interesting thing is that in ascites most of the time bird shows death with a pattern of abdominal recumbency and in case of sudden death syndrome you will find the bird dying with the dorsal recumbency so the bird will die like this just taking their abdominal abdomen in upper side and the dorsal side getting to the ground in the in the um, litter so this is a typical sign by which we can see and the syndrome mostly occur in the heavier male birds when their growth rate is highest so among them female or the lean and thin or the weak bird will not die only you will find the heavier or the ready bird will show this syndrome so more feed intake and continuous lighting for long period of time in boiler house result in higher mortality due to sudden death syndrome compared to intermittent lighting so here we can practice intermittent lighting so there is two type of lighting pattern uh, as our friend from india already explained that they do not give um, uh, lighting no artificial light this is one pattern another pattern is having a low grow uh, slow growing birds with just have a seven days of light first seven days of light with 23 hours then reduce to three to four dark hour and when the bird is ready to sell then again increase the light and have a dark period of one hour so once again if i repeat the things in the first week 23 hours of light and one hour of dark in the last week 23 hours of light and one hour of dark and in between the first week and the last week you have to be a dark period of at least four hours with this you can reduce the intervention of this this disease i will share one more practical uh, practical very much profitable or losses kind of a uh, input if you are if you are not if you are not putting uh, if you are not switching on the light in last 3 days or 4 days if you are not switching on like mera matlab hai 23 ghanta aapko light dena hai aur 1 ghanta light nahi dena agar aapne aisa nahi kiya in last 4 days you are shrinkage shrinkage of the bird from your farm to the trader house from normal 3 to 4 percent it will become 10 percent because birds have already adopted their strategy of eating during uh, light period and during light period they start eating more because they know that they are not going to get feed if it is continued and when you start selling the bird they already have more than what you call that 120 gram in their crop and you will not be able to like you know i mean i mean here we call expanded crop because they have already developed 
that uh, what you call that uh, strategy of eating uh, more during that light hours so the uh, the losses to the trader will be much more if you don't switch on the light mm -hmm. yeah 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 thank you so um, uh, here just to conclude that you have to manage the light as well as uh, the growth with the feed and nutrient uh, nutrient input now the next i uh, i have a very good case study problem to all of you uh, most of the time i encounter this problem uh, maybe i have seen in uh, in my practice since last 7 to 8 years that's why this typical type of problem i like to share with you and then uh, as well as also i like to have your experience so i have i have a complaint from a farmer from the layers farmer that the bird is showing lameness and mortality during with the rise of egg production so if we talk this is the phase when the bird has just started laying and going toward the peak production so during that period this problem arises most of the time and the farmer says in the daytime the bird is very healthy looks normal no problem but in the midnight there is the death what may be the cause so please share uh, i i like to request uh, the field veterinarians joining here to share your experience what may be the cause and how will you re reduce it or what can be the disease yeah you can put uh, unmute your microphone and simply put your views by voice or you may even drop in chat box anyway anything you can just share the, your experience i think um, if you are a layer board practitioner you might have uh, certainly faced this type of issue and with lot of medication you are unable to cure it i am for sure that's why i like to highlight this disease so that next time you won't be failure i can see dr sanjay here he is rearing layers uh, maybe you can see yeah, dr San dr sanjay please share your experience have you seen this problem uh, yes sir in our farm this problem has been seen but in the same case during the night time if it has been called out and kept outside the farm then it will not die in that time mm -hmm. such case such as also been seen so how you corrected it this has been corrected automatically after 5 to 7 days or 10 to 15 days that during night time we go to farm and take out those birds outside and keep for a while one to two hours but outside then it will be active again and then again it will be kept inside then it will be seen as fresh like mm -hmm. so can you say what is the reason what is the disease or what is the cause i thought that may be due to the reason of calcium d3 d deficiency mm -hmm. yeah both of you are correct calcium deficiency as, as well as d3 deficiency and we call it as a calcium titani calcium titani this is a very new disease very common disease nowadays with the intensive farming where we rear like more than 50000 birds in a in a flock so just i like to uh, share my experience on this how we what how it happens and how we can correct it so with this dr. slide dr. you can... dr sab in india like you know uh, for example if i have a 4000 birds uh, uh, at my farm uh, i can see the leg weakness like na dono paon jo hai right left ho jate hain or they start walking on the hogs approximately 1.5% bird will have such kind of diseases i mean at the end i am talking about while selling i mean if, if the flock is very good then probably the uh, the quantity will go to 0.5% but if the flock is like when i say very good means that if the if the cfcr is around 1.35 3.7 then probably 0.5% uh, will come. If the FCR is around 1.55, then probably we will have a 1.5% of uh, such birds which are lame. I mean, which either you cannot sell or uh, like you know, or you get less little lesser price while selling. 
is it the same issue i mean the d3 and the calcium deficiency or uh, maybe uh, the uh, by keeping the birds outside it will get resolved yeah i think uh, um, uh, this problem is not so much related with uh, with your uh, problem but uh, the reason in the in case of boiler uh, for uh, the history what you said now which might be uh, like uh, if we are rearing if we are not giving a uh, good space to the birds uh, during the first week that might be one of the cause i will say lot of causes and you can just pick maybe uh, according to your farm you can just check what can be uh, among them so the one is a very high density during the first week or the first day or first three days what happened that the bird uh, uh try to just it is a very lazy type of bird whether is a very lazy one so they try to get a feed and water just sitting and just having a um, everything in a single place so most of the time you will see it will eat and just try to sleep or take rest and again when you will disturb it will go to the feeder and drinker and get some feed and water so this can be the one of the cause another cause is very common cause is mycoplasma synovii due to which you can see uh, there is a inflammation of joint and then the bird uh, try to sit you know, on the hawk as well as there is a problem of rio virus so rio virus due to rio virus also there is uh, tenosynovitis uh, so there is a inflammation i got your point percent of the bird so only that yeah. 1% of the bird gets affected just 1% yeah. yes just just little bit so if you can uh, maybe you are right about mycoplasma yeah please you check your um, uh, maybe uh, uh, the points what i told you can be among any one of them uh, to uh, to your perspective sure 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 i will revert back to you thank you thank you very much thank you so so now uh, before this i was talking about a calcium uh, titani let me explain how it happens so if there is uh, you can see this slide and uh, this is a very simple one if you can see there is a uh, the bird take utilizes calcium phosphorus vitamin d with the feed then it goes to the small intestine from a small intestine calcium and phosphorus is absorbed in the blood whereas vitamin d3 is taken uh, by the liver it uh, uh, change into the d3 d d active form in the kidney and from the kidney again it comes to the blood and what i remember that if you have a mouth like a bone or a, uh, you see, you can suppose mouth is similar with the egg or your uh, bone and you have a calcium in your plate but vitamin d is the spoon so if you don't have a spoon to take that calcium and keep into your mouth calcium is useless calcium you can you cannot do anything with the calcium that's why vitamin d is very important and with a close house with the intensive farming system this matters a lot that's why um, most of the time i need to supplement extra calcium uh, and extra vitamin d especially in case of uh, close house birds so you can see with the calcium storage they have a buffering of calcium and d3 but most of the time calcium are taken out by the egg cells so as sanjay told uh, the farmer has a complaint that when they enter to the farms by like a 10 o'clock to uh, 12 or 1 pm they will find most of the bird just laying both by both the eggs back side so they take the both their legs back towards the tail and they sit just for, uh, in the uh, kill bone um, so uh, ventral recumbency and when they take the birds to outside they again get fresh and mortality can be reduced so if you will do nothing you, if you have no any intervention if you supplement if you do not supplement any things or you uh, do not give any uh, medication to them so this problem can also be automatic re resolved but it will take longer time like 3 to 4 month up to 3 to 4 month because when the production starts the egg production starts so they needs more calcium so the birds 
who do not have this type of balanced mechanism of calcium, phosphorus, and vitamin D, what happened? They cannot supply calcium for the egg cell, due to which the blood reserve calcium are drained out for the cell production, for the covering of the egg, due to which the muscle and bone have a deficit. They have a less amount of calcium. That's why the bird so lame. And if you take out or if you put your finger, your finger to the cloaca and remove the egg from that, then also the bird will be very fine. So if you can stop the mechanism of cell formation, then this problem can be resolved. And the problem normally happened due to poor calcium absorption during growing time. So if you postmortem this type of birds and you see the keel bone, this, that is not a state, but it is like a curve one. So the keel bone is curved. You can find more lesions with the calcium deficiency. And the flock which is showing this calcium titani is more uninform. So you will say, see the good size bird as well as the very lean and thin birds. So the bird which is not properly mature for production, in that flock, you will see this calcium titanium problem. So what we suggest for recovery, we increase calcium in the feed. We give the calcium grit in the feeder, like three to five gram per birds, as well as we have a oral supplement of supplementation of vitamin D and calcium for more than 15 to 21 days. Not one, not it cannot be resolved for like if you give for uh, five days or seven days. But here I like to remember you, do not give any antibiotic, do not give vitamin E, do not give other type of supplement because it is useless. You are throwing the money. So it is useless for you. So if you properly diagnose this type of calcium titani, you can manage the calcium metabolism and you can uh, correct this type of problem. So with the conclusion, the health status of present day bird is facing new challenges day by day, which can be conquered by the right scientific and advanced nutritional approaches, thus making the farm, poultry farming more profitable and presentable in the market, global market. Nutritional strategy and proper feed formulation with a specific dietary regime can combat this up to a certain extent by minimizing the incidence of various infectious disease, nervous disorder, and metabolic disorder. So I think if you have any queries or any problem or uh, any feedback, uh, I have completed my topic. You can uh, share your experiences or feedback here. Yes, uh, I have uh, in chat box, uh, Ujwal Gautam has uh, mentioned oxygen and calcium deficiency. Yeah, oxygen is related to uh, fulfill the requirement of energy. So it has, if they have a good oxygen, then uh, they will uh, re release energy as well as calcium deficiency is the very important point. That's why we call it as a calcium titani disease. And uh, you can also, reduce this problem by changing the liter. So because if it has a old liter, it will produce more ammonia due to which there will be less oxygen and there will be less release of energy. You are right. And then Santos has written to uh, switching a lab technique available in those flocks that have already suffered with the condition of ascites. Do you have any experience? Uh, just always remember that if there is a incidence of ascites, if the, the ascites has already been seen in your flock, that means there is a failure of kidney as well as liver. So once the kidney and liver fails, there is no any way to recover it. Only the thing is that you can stop this problem occurring in the same flocks with other birds. So you can save the other birds. 
okay hmm. then bharat raj gautam has a question that is not light color duration important grading uh, yes uh, intensity of light color of light and duration light is very important with a uh, uh, cannabis management but as my topic suggested i only highlighted you with the nutritional aspect this is also very important and critical can can't excess artificial light more than 16 hour a day affect egg production and cannabis respectively to some extent yeah more than 16 hour of light affect egg production as well as cannabis the main important factor is not the duration of light but the very important factor is intensity of light so if you are giving more high intensity of light that is the main factor behind it uh, i have a experience with some farmer that uh, in hetoda and uh, i remember in the cabre i have a history with the farmer that they never switch off their light they always have a light on in the layers farm and still they were getting more than 85% production i don't know what is the scientific reason but there are also some uh, either in the lighting program when they provide uh, overnight light then also they have a very good production but scientifically and in our farm in uh, farms where i practice i just give 15 hours of light and that is enough so previous research researchers they told us that tells us that we need 16 hour of light in the layers but now it is only 15 hour is enough and if you are giving if you talk about uh, the lighting intensity for the close house if you are giving 3 to 5 lux in a growing phase then just multiply by 10 in laying house so for example if i am giving 5 lux light in a growing uh, phase then i will provide i need to provide 50 lux of light in the laying phase so in this part you can manage your light intensity uh, the last question i think uh, from ashish is uh, can you elaborate have nutritional paralysis and uh, neck twitching yeah nutritional paralysis uh, I, I i i did not cover yeah in this uh, slide but uh, like a uh, uh, vitamin b1 deficiency uh, you can see the torticollis uh, similarly starch grazing pro um, uh, problems uh, these are the um, uh, problems which is very associated with the nutritional uh, aspects mm -hmm. i think there is no more questions now so okay so with this last thank you very much i just like to remember you that everyone should go and join uh, run for protein on uh, saturday and the, the last there is a announcement uh, this is a uh, just a first hand information to me that uh, swargdwari feed industry in the tang is uh, interested to have higher a uh, techno commercial manager veterinarian so uh, just you can write an email and you can contact them any of you who are interested can get a job okay so thank you very much thank you thank you very much uh, dr subhish singh sir for your thank insightful, you thank you very much sir thank you very much uh, for your insightful talk on nutritional diseases in poultry it's always a pleasure for us to be blessed with your kind continued help and support on such programs uh, I'm sure the vets and the participants attending this talk must have developed a greater insight to the nutritional diseases in chicken after this uh, presentation. And thank you especially for being ready to help us on such a short notice. Uh, thank you all the enthusiastic uh, participants. We look forward to cooperating with you in future as well to disseminate the knowledge, experience, uh, expertise you have uh, for the benefit of global, national and global livestock, poultry and feed industry. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Have a nice time. Bye.